once again to the show that never ends. Your host, Tony Caravan, here. The author of nine books and about 50 beat poetry tracks that are fantastic, super fabulistic, and nobody listens to them. Let me tell the whole story over the past 15, 20 years of what is happening right now. Anyway, flash forward to the present. As of this taping, we are one day away from the official dateline, timeline, date of the end of Western civilization. Everything will be tra traced back to January 20th, 2021. Some may trace it back to November uh, of 2020, but uh, officially it's uh, I have a tomorrow. feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. And I still see there are people in denial, but I'm not going to rag on that the same the way I ragged on we're on it yesterday. I was at the grocery store today, and if this is of course, this is how you go shopping right now. Not that this thing is any protection for your eye droplets or any of that stuff, but according to the man with dementia that's going to be taking over the big house uh, people are gonna to have to wear these for the next 100 days I spoke with many doctors and healthcare workers who basically say it's utter and complete nonsense utter complete nonsense not no science based whatsoever it might protect someone in case you sneeze but uh, you know, if you're sick stay at home you know, if you sneeze, is a trick. If you, twish, if you put pressure on your nose right here, if you feel sneeze coming on, just pressure that right there, you're not going to sneeze. Something to do with the nerve or something up there. I don't know the exact scientific explanation for it. Try that sometime. You think you're going to sneeze sometime? Just press it right, right there. Just press it. You know, Don't break your nose. So just put some pressure there. You'd be surprised. Otherwise, you know, some people sneeze into their uh, elbow sleeve or something like that, whatever. Or if you have a handkerchief, either something like that, or you do the old gazud height. All right, but let's get into it. I, I don't really, uh, I don't really know what to say anymore. You Richard, know, it, the there the reaches world. a point when. After I wrote my eighth book, might have been, in fact, actually, I wrote, it was actually my sixth book. Obviously, if you're tuned in here, you're tuning in to hear my story. So, you know, uh, unlike that guy Lionel, <laughs> you know, who's just, uh, I don't know where his head's at, man. I don't, it's, anyway. Uh, th but the thing is, after my sixth book, I believe it was, I said, you know, and songs. I didn't write in. I don't believe I wrote any songs in 2020. Uh, I, I can't. I'm not, I might, there might have been one. But the bulk of my work was, you know, leading up to that. And all my lyrics for all of my beat poetry tracks can be found in my books. Uh, usually like every song I wrote within that year or, or the time frame from when that book was written, uh, I would include the lyrics in there. I used to put them on like, they used to be on like a poetry site. And I used to get a lot of people like were into some of them, you know, like one of my most popular ones was Despair, uh, which is really, you know, quite telling and depressing at the same time. When you think that the, one of my most popular poems was a poem about despair. It says something about the state of mind of the general population in the U.S., and going forward, you know, as uh, this delusion of hope fades into the reality of dystopia, you know, I think there probably will be a lot of despair. And we need to combat that by remembering, as I said in yesterday's uh, rant, um, that... You know, there was life before politics became pop culture. There was life before Donald Trump became the president. And the past five years, there's been this singular focus on one man. You know, think about that. You know, for better or worse, 
you know, the idea. You know, we didn't do that before. You know, before we used to know who presidents were, uh, you know, and if there was an event of some kind or the presidential speech, maybe some people watched it. I never really paid much attention to it at all. Like I said, I, I lived in Malibu um, during the first Gulf War, and uh, I remember uh, hanging out at uh, some beach house, some girl I was dating at the time, and she had the TV on because I never watched TV uh, when I lived uh, when I lived in Malibu because we were just focusing on creative projects and it was just so beautiful. So it was just too much fun to sit around watching TV. And most people I knew were either in the entertainment business or on TV shows and stuff. And if anybody who knows anybody who uh, is involved in that industry is like, you yeah, don't watch yourself on TV. Rarely. I mean, sometimes. But, you know, it's like most don't. And anyway, TV was on in the other room. We came out of the, our room. And there was this reporter and bombs going off and stuff. And I'm going like, what's that? And people looked at me like I was an idiot. And they said, it's a war. We're, it's, we're a war. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. Well, I'm like, oh, oh, really? <laughs> is there any beer left in your refrigerator? Anyway, so, you know, and of course that was George H.W. Bush's, uh, you know, war at the time the uh, first first gulf war unnecessary deaths over uh you know over something that uh, could have been solved uh, in a, in many in another way i know that's going to piss off a lot of people but believe me i've got my i've got I put in my time okay just that guys like me have, guys who are mostly invisible is the best I can put it so what happens now where do we go from here it was the title of one of my earlier videos well where we go from here is simple we deal with reality and reality is your life your life and you know there was never any any chance that your your life was going to be improved by in the second term of Donald J. Trump. Now, before you turn off the old uh, YouTube switcheroo, think, listen, them, hear me out. Um, you know, when you have these globalists that control everything, when the Marxists control everything. When the media is totally controlled and you have the school systems are totally controlled, you you're we're breeding generations of children who are programmed to believe in revisionist history. And then when they graduate, they're looking up at a notification, something from a quick spam from Quicken Loans or something. You ever notice how much spam we're getting now? It's ridiculous. You know, all the wackos are out there trying to make a quick buck on morons sitting at home abiding by these uh, lockdowns. I don't abide by them. I went out for, I was out walking today. I walked down the street. I wasn't wearing a mask. Anyway, um, been to the doctor, you know, I like get my pr temperature checked and all that stuff. I had a COVID test a while back, negative. Like I said, I talk to doctors and healthcare workers, and I don't care who comes on or like that weird Brit guy who's like there putting out, you know, make himself important, some doctorish guy, some old old guy. What a crank! What a what a crock! Cr you know, I'm gonna say crock of shit from some some wacko. People watch. Oh, I gotta watch this stuff. People glued to the TV, scared shitless. Yeah, I'm not holding back on words these days. They're just words. It's how we talk. That's our vernacular in the 21st century, and it's been that vernacular, well, for centuries, really. This false uh, 
false pretension of, uh, you know, avoiding certain raunchiness, as they say. Be that as it may, I'm not going to get into that either because I've, I've covered that stuff. So as we approach this eternal lockdown, dystopia, reopening the, uh, you know, letting Iran build a nuke, you know, was the latest one I heard. They're going to re allow them to do that. Uh, you know, you name it. If it if it's the craziest idea you ever thought of. It seems to be on the first 100 day agenda of the of Dementia Joe, you know, the crooked politician who took 30 million from uh, the communist Chinese with his son. The big guy, you got 50 percent of uh, of the take of the graft from his what, 40 years in uh, politics, him and his brother and his son, you know, had this. Uh, scheme going on it's just shysters as they call it yeah just selling out america to the world and that's how we got into this place obama helped doing it but it was the politicians like biden's the pelosi's and all those people that basically got us to you know were, were the people that led to the fall of the american empire and, you know, we are an empire, you know, basically America, you know, look at the military might and all that stuff. But now you got Pelosi and Biden administration people basically vetting 25,000 troops because they're afraid of the, their own military. That's bizarre. That's weird. Having tens of thousands of troops on the street in D.C., pretty much makes it look like we are in an authoritarian police state. It's not the first time people were in a government building or in the Congress. These hallowed halls, they're not hallowed halls, it's just a fucking building. You know, it's right out of the old Reichstag thing, you know, the Nazis used to basically uh, take a, uh, prove their point and, and put Hitler in, uh, in his dictator, you know? a false flag event all this information that's come out now you know the infiltration you know that the so-called first wave the instigators of the people who broke in were, were Antifa BLM uh, and then some really kind of like shady kind of spook type characters that were obviously uh, part of the uh, you know the so-called deep state you know the agent provocateurs and those and all those capital guards come on in let them in just because you have a capital guard uniform on doesn't mean you're a capital guard you know weird stuff right people shooting into the crowd cops shooting into the crowd what who is that guy has that guy been arrested for killing that 16 year old girl right i mean i don't watch the news maybe so maybe not but uh you know, that would have been a big stink if that would have happened uh, in Portland, right? Crazy stuff going on, my friends. So, you know, think about it. Think about it. Think about all the crazy stuff going on. And think about how these people keep talking about, oh, if this happens, this will be the end of the Republican Party. Or if this, there is no Republican Party anymore. There is no Democrat Party anymore. The parties are over. Do you understand? Do you really understand that the United States as a country is ended? It's a geographic location with a name on a map called the United States of America. But the nation, the republic for which it stands is gone. They've already basically abolished the Constitution over the past year. And there's these people, well, you know, trust in the plan and these people are going to be prosecuted and watch what comes out. Well, how's it going to come out? You know, who, who's going to bring this out? Oh, well, a couple of people in Congress? Well, they'll blackball them and their families or threaten them and do whatever. It's like Roberts in the Supreme Court. You don't think that guy... And his family, it, the, the reason he's, he became, he switched and became a loon 
that it hasn't that he wasn't you know that he wasn't compromised come on man wake up to reality wake up to the world like i always say you watch these jason bourne movies jack reacher mission impossible you know all those all those dc spy thriller novels and movies those are all written by dc insiders that's where those stories come from now they change the name to protect the innocent as they say but the idea is that they're watered down stories of what really goes on in dc yet people watch them they become blockbuster hits but they don't really grasp the idea that yeah that's what really goes on what do you think jason it's not fantasy you know it's not fantasy that's what really goes on why what do you think these like hundreds of thousands of people who work for these spy agencies do do you think they're all just sitting there in front of a computer terminal right they're all just you know working on like uh you know making maps for the cia and stuff i mean yeah they've got a lot of people doing that they're just you know data collection and clerical you know that sort of thing yeah, sure. I mean, that's, that's that's part of what they do. Big data has always been has always been part of uh, of the surveillance state. But you know, every embassy we have in every country that is important in some way, shape, or form is also uh, you know a CIA station, and we've got station you know chiefs in there. Pompeo was ahead of the CIA. And then he became the head of the State Department. It was the most honest thing done under the Trump administration to just basically put that right out there. You know, everyone knew for years that, every, you know, and it, it, it goes both ways. I mean, that's why they, remember they closed that uh, Chinese embassy in Texas and then they caught them, they were burning all the stuff they had down there. You know, and they, they expelled those Russians and, you know, from uh, at, at an embassy. Well, what do you think? Yeah, that, that yeah, State Department um, and uh, embassies are where the spy. That's how the spies come in, and because they're they're allowed to have you know, they have couriers and they have these pouches. They could bring in anything they want to, and it can't you know, and it, they can't be. Uh, they have diplomatic immunity. I mean, in New York City, stories you don't hear too much about it before, but the kids of diplomats would be involved in hit and run mur murder or killings and stuff like that and they've had diplomatic immunity and that would be it and the new york cops couldn't do a darn thing about it see that's the world that people just don't even they don't accept or they see it in the movies and they think it's like oh that's in the that's just in the movies no real life is worse than the movies real life is more intense than the movies you know Right now, there's there are people killing people in the name of government, okay? All governments, you know, they're spying going. Oh, the such and such hacked our hacked the U.S. They're hacking us every day, and we're hacking them every day. You know, we've got teams doing that stuff. People just don't want to. They don't want to accept reality. Now, moving forward, as we get into this thing where these puppeteers that are controlling the world right now and who have taken over the United States, I have no idea why the lighting is getting really weird here. But um, when, as these borders open up and we have the free flow of people coming in from known terrorist countries and people coming in from all, all these southern areas where that are... are where the cartels, the, you know, the gang bangers, human trafficking, when all that stuff goes on, uh, what do you think is going to happen when you have hundreds of thousands or perhaps a million people uh, this year uh, come into the United States? Like I said before, in a, at a time when there are no, no real jobs, you know, where, you know, robotics, algorithms, etc. There are just no, 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 no jobs. What are these people going to do? You know, so they're going to just what flood into the big cities. Has anyone paid attention to what happened in Europe? 
and then how Europe regrets what happened. Now the uh, the light went out. Well, anyway, I, I just wanted to touch on some of that stuff. I don't babble too much. It's the same stuff, but it's like kind of a little, little bit of a little morning madness um, that I thought I would just, just you know, again jackhammer into people's minds. That the idea is that look, get yourself together, get your act together, live your life, be happy. You know, you, you can find happiness because if you're a Donald Trump wasn't president. All right. Four years ago. Um, there was no Facebook at Twitter, you know, 10, 12 years ago. Not the way it is now. I mean, these companies formed over a period of time and, you know, grew, you know, from various school and Silicon Valley areas until they became nationwide obsessions. But they, they, you know, basically, you know, 10, 12 years ago, the average person didn't even, you know, wasn't even on these sites. And the average person, the average person didn't have a phone with all these apps and all that stuff on it. You know, they had like a Blackberry or early, you know, the early version of iPhone. It's not even, that's how, so come on, man, you know, wake up and, and just go back. It's like, it's like time to like wake up from the dream and go back to living life, go back to living normal life. And, uh, that's all I'm going to do today. I just wanted to come on, you know, show the old face, look into the camera, which is up there, like I say. They would have to put the camera like right, you know, somewhere. So you can't, that's why I have trouble with like when I do this thing with the finger thing where I'm trying to point to something because the camera is way up here. And there are ways of, you know, angling cameras. I mean, camera technology is amazing right now that they could have you looking straight in the camera. Another thing, just a quick aside, Apple used to when they had on one of their, um, a photo booth thing you used to have a thing where you could put a green screen type of thing behind you and they had various things they eliminated that in like you know like the one of the recent upgrades why did they do that well my guess is that the, so people couldn't mask where they were they want to see what's in your house you know it's pretty funny isn't it yeah yeah big data big tech you know, wake up to reality. That's it. You know, it's all over. The lighting on this thing sucks. I wish you all the best. I'll talk to you soon. This was just, this is just another babble like yesterday. Cheers. Teddy Caravan with you. We're live at the end of the world.